So the Jeff now is not J-E-F-F. -F. <laughs> it's not a man named Jeff. It is G-E-F. That stands for Global Environment Facility. And then the SGP, Small Grants Program. So if you have Jeff SGP, that's what we refer you to. Now the Jeff Small Grants Program is a United Nations Development Program. It is being implemented by the United Nations Development Program, UNDP. Okay, so you're writing the UN system right now. <laughs> It is a program that builds capacity. And based on what you have heard so far about this project, I am sure you will recognize that clearly we are going to be building your capacity in terms of knowledge, skills, equipment, supplies, whatever is required that we can supply at this time, because we cannot do everything in one small project, to build you as an individual, to build the organization, the APD, and to build Dominica. Because whatever each individual can contribute positively will help to grow the organization, and whatever the organization and other organization can do will grow the country and build up our resilience. So this program was established in 1992, and it provides financial and technical support to civil society organizations. So we support community groups, community organizations, registered or non-registered. That includes like non-government organizations like the DAPD, cooperative organizations, cooperative societies, and other community-based organizations. We do not give funding directly to government. Okay? What we do, the projects, and the country program will work in partnership with government organizations, the relevant organizations. So for example, for this project, we would expect a great partnership with DAPD and local government department who is responsible for shelters, the Met Office, the Office of Disaster Management. I hope as the project goes on, they will come on board and develop that great partnership. Because what we're actually doing is providing funding through a community-based organization that these government institutions should really be doing those activities, okay? But we cannot fund the, the government departments directly, so they should be appreciating that we're funding the, their activities, but with a community-based organization. So that is where we look for the partnerships and the co-financing and the support that they will serve as facilitators, they will provide the necessary guidelines, the guidance, they will um, move towards policy by involving themselves directly with those groups and individuals like you who can have a direct say in what is expected or what should be considered for persons with disabilities. Um, the program is rooted in the belief that local actions can contribute to addressing global environmental problems. And what is he saying that each individual, each organization, each community can do something. And together, when all the results come together, we have a global impact. So it's not just doing it on your own and thinking when nothing is happening. Because when you do it, as I said before, another organization will want to do the same thing. Another country might want to do the same or even better. And so if everybody does their part, imagine in all the islands of the Caribbean and in all the countries of the world, a project like that is done with persons with disabilities. What is going to happen? Overall, globally, you will have so many millions of persons with disabilities who are more empowered. So that's what we mean by local action having a global impact. And I really want this project to influence that global impact. So we see persons with disabilities, which um, the Jeff has recognized as over a million people worldwide. And I'm sure Napoli will have much more information on that. 50 million, okay. We are, they said, um, the Jeff SGP says these people are disproportionately affected by the impacts of climate change and other environmental issues. And so we need to participate in the design 
and implementation of projects. So this project didn't just come about by the Jefferson Grant or disaster management or somebody is just saying, we need to do this for persons with disabilities or with persons with disabilities. The persons with disabilities have done the, the assessment, the needs assessment, they know what is needed, they have experience. As our brother explained, the Hurricane Maria, and all the other challenges that you go through daily. So you have an input, you know what you need. And so for the association, as your voice, as a representative organization, they have suggested some of the things that are necessary. And we also took the opportunity, based on our experiences and other projects globally, to contribute or to suggest other things that can be included in the project. So this is a project of the person with disabilities. Um, we know that they often face exclusion and barriers to full participation in society. And we hope that through this project, or we know that through this project, this is going to be reduced and eventually eliminated. The exclusion and the barriers to full participation. As you are empowered, as you become more enlightened, more knowledgeable, gain your new skills, you are going to be able to now advocate more and put yourself in a position that where you will be recognized and you will not be left out. But you have to continue working as a body. Okay? So you work together as and Jeff Small Grants will continue supporting you. We have done so far targeted four targeted projects with persons with disabilities. But all of our other 117 projects do include persons with disabilities because in every community, every um, society, you will have persons with disabilities that may be not even recognized or designated as such, but they benefit from whatever is being done. So when we do tree planting projects, it benefits everybody. If we do a um, disaster uh, management project, it benefits all. If, it, if we do the um, solid waste management project, whatever type of project that is done, the composting, eventually it will benefit everyone. But we felt that it was necessary to do some targeted projects. And so we are doing this project with DAP. We have a project now with Abilities Unlimited, that's known as the Workshop for the Blind, where we're going to support the livelihood initiative, the, the workshop, you know, just rehabilitate the ambience, the, the workspace, and get some skills training in new products, so new product designs, marketing skills, and um, also, Incorporating that a planting component where persons with disabilities or persons associated with the workshop will be engaged in planting of the raw material like the vertebrae and scooper and other things that are required. So that is a link directly to land degradation, sustainable land management, where it will be used in a practical way to um, retain soil, help with the reduction in land slippage, but at the same time supplying the craft industry for persons with disabilities and so empower them in terms of life, moods and income. We're also looking at the House of Hope. And the House of Hope is a home that um, is located at Davis, where you have persons with disabilities, and they are fully cared for by the St. Vincent de Paul Society. And we are helping them in terms of um, the building itself, rehabilitation. And we are looking at reducing the vulnerability of the house of hope. They have concrete roof, but we are going to be doing the ceiling of the roof because it is leaking. And the electrical supplies, we are looking to do solar energy for these people as well. And a component of that is to do their backyard gardening so that they can have healthy foods, they're composting, and they can become self-sustaining. They can feed themselves, provide for the home, and also sell so they can get some income to support the home. And also there is increased capacity for staff, training for staff. Abilities unlimited, I said before. And of course, the, this project Nafali has already outlined a lot of the components. This is W. also mentioned some of them. 
I, I want to reiterate the importance of giving the information that I did not fully speak of. Give the information and give correct information when these surveys are being conducted. Because this information is valid, it has to be valid for it to be as valuable as it should be to be used in terms of decision making and planning as they go forward. The workshop for the shelter manager is very important because we want them to know how to manage the shelters considering the needs of the person with disabilities. We also want them to know to not just managing the shelters but the, the facilities itself. So if there is a, a need for some upgrade or some adjustment or some inclusion, they will be able to recognize it and make the recommendation as well. Okay? And the small equipment tool supplies for the members in terms of agriculture support, or if you're doing, um, maybe some of you are doing cakes or sewing at home, you know, if where possible, we expect this project to be able to support you in some tangible way. It's not a big load of money, it's not millions, because it's not, not like they sold any big um, investment or anything. It's just a small grant. <laughs> So all we want to do is to support you in a small way, as much as possible, to continue your livelihood, continue making a little income, so you don't rely on DAPD and say every day you need some help or somebody else. All that is part of building resilience, where you can be independent, you can buy your own food, your clothes, pay a little bills. So if you already have something going on, when you're doing the survey, you need to give the correct information. And if you have new ideas, as Napoli said, that will be used in terms of decision making going forward. So that is why you have to give the correct information. And I like the idea of coming up with a bigger project later on. Because what is actually happening now is that the just small grants, we're just completing oper operational phase six. But there's an opportunity for us to get some special funding to work with persons with disabilities. Still on the operational phase six. So we had a Three choices, blue economy, um, women-led enterprises, and persons with disabilities. And for us, SGP Dominica, we said put persons with disabilities initiative as our first priority. So we have applied for this grant, it is competitive. We're hoping that we can be one the country, one of the eight countries that are selected to receive that one one hundred thousand to, to 150,000 US dollars to focus on work specifically with persons with disabilities. So I don't have to say extra prayers, I'm always going to say some extra prayers, and not only extra prayers, but practical demonstration for this project. Mm -hmm. That we can do it, that we need the additional support, that there are things that, other things that need to be done. And so this has to be a model, and this is why we chose to do three projects right now with persons with disabilities to demonstrate what we can do, what we will do, and so um, influence the consideration for Dominica to receive that additional funding. And if we do, we expect the APD to be a key partner. So we're looking forward to a great partnership with the um, DAPD and other organizations that focus on addressing the needs of persons with disabilities. So we continue to engage with persons with disabilities and organizations to ensure that guidelines are responsive to their needs on based on their perspective, not on ours or government officials or you know other um, international organizations, but based on the perspective of you as persons with disabilities who have to live with disabilities and need the support to make the necessary adjustments and live as normal as you can. That nothing is developed about us, nothing about us without us. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so that is something that the Jeff Smallman's global program is emphasizing. Nothing is developed about us without us mm -hmm. for persons with disabilities. And so you have to be engaged in the process. And lessons learned from the pilot projects will be shared globally. So whatever recordings that we have from BABA and in your reports, whatever information you give, that will be shared to the global program. So grant making 
We will support at least two to three community-based projects if we are able to get this additional funding. Even if we are not able to get this additional funding, our operational phase seven is coming on stream towards the end of the year. And each organization can only get one grant in a phase. So luckily, we were able to push and get this project in operational phase six. So it means that we have an opportunity to get another grant in operational phase seven. Okay, now the phases are four years. So now that operational phase six is just ending, we got this one. Operational phase seven is going to begin. As soon as we finish this project successfully, you can apply for another grant for operational phase seven. Okay. Now, that takes me back to the one year that I'm not really um, spoke of for the project, but we are not going to force you to force everything into that short period. You will go according to your pace to ensure that you get the results, so it's not a rush rush, and if you need more time, we will give you more time. You can extend the project time, okay? So don't put too much pressure on yourself and just try to meet a date without getting the results that you want to get. Okay. So we will work with you on that as usual. We'll be very patient, we will work with you, we will give the necessary support. What the Jeff Small Grants does also is look for partners, for co-financing, try to encourage people to work with you to provide the necessary technical support and additional financial support. So this is where I will stop off and ask for questions because we want to make it a little interactive. And um, we really look forward to a great partnership with DAPD. And when you meet me on the road, tell me about the project, right? So if it's not for it's not that you can tell me, oh, but you said we have had a workshop. Oh, we had a workshop last week. That was so good. Thank you to the Jeff Small Grants Program. And always remember to give recognition to your donor, those who are sponsoring, not only Jeff Small Grants Program, but anybody who's supporting you. And you realize this morning, a lot was said about this and so Irma said a lot about Jeff Small Grant, and Nathalie kind of stops speaking about <laughs> Jeff Small Grant. Everybody, we like that, not only just for calling the name, but to let other people know that things are possible with a small grant, okay? So that they can follow and give small grants and continue or bigger grants to support what we are doing. So we like the recognition, but it is also a way of encouraging others to come on board and say, okay, not only just small grants can do it, we can do it too, or we can partner with just small grants to do bigger things. And we are happy to have people like Baba and Tina, Alexander, and others who will be working closely on this project. And we look forward, as I said, to a great partnership and a successful project. When we go across an island, we are going to be putting up signs. The project will have to do some signage. Mm -hmm. So where you do key activities, mm -hmm. people pass around. Because let me tell you, after Hurricane Maria, we had one of the key persons in, from the UN office in New York. And when they went up across the island, so they came back, a few other um, agencies. You know what he said? It was Luca Rinder was his name. He was one of the first who came and actually set up a UN project office post marriage. And he said, Jeff Smogans is doing a lot of work in normal people and good work too. So I was like, really? So how did you know that? Where did he said, we saw signs all over and we spoke to the people. So where they saw the signs, they actually spoke to people in the communities and asked, what about? And that is the time I people found out that there was a sign in um, Salibe Primary School. Inside of Salibe Primary School, there is an SGP sign, which we did not do the project with Salibe Primary, but that's to show you how the people recognize the importance of that project and the value in that project. That project was done before I came into Jeff Smallman's program, and I joined in 2010. And that was done with Tina Alexander and Mr. Harris and the others with sleep, sustainable living, usually. And what they were doing were pilots and renewable energy. So you see how long ago Jess Morgan said this kind of general resilience yeah. in business? Yeah. I think they used to be part of They were doing um, a solar, yeah. a wind generate, generated, a hydropower models. And that was one was done in Saturday. 
and then the sign was taken by the principal, the teachers, and they placed it inside of the school. So you see, it's a long time that we have been talking about climate change and resilience, but we are happy that others are on board now and are actually doing some practical things. So thank you very much, and learn more about your project so that you can talk to people about the project. Okay, I hope you listen very well. So at the end, people don't say, oh, it's just a, a document they're going to prepare, or it's just, a, you know, let's learn more about it.